G'day guys! On a recent video, I talked about some of the different skills that you can work on and the things that you can develop in preparation for 10th edition. A lot of the strategies, combos, and tactics that we know and love from 9th edition are not going to translate over to 10th, but there are some fundamental skills that you can work on now and continue to develop so that when 10th edition comes, you're prepared and you're ready to hit the ground running. Today, we're going to be talking about how to identify and how to pursue a win condition. This is something that's absolutely critical to the way Warhammer 40k plays in 9th edition, and we know for sure that this is going to be critical in 10th edition. So we're going to talk about identifying the win condition right now. Walk for the blood god. G'day guys, I recently did a video where I talked about some of the different skills that you can work on now during 9th edition that will prepare you and put you in a good position when 10th edition is released. A lot of the skills that we can currently work on, things like strategies and tactics and those sorts of things, various combos, they're not going to serve you very well when 10th edition comes out. Whereas there's some things that you can work on now that you will be able to bring with you into 10th edition. In that video, one of the things I glanced over was identifying your win condition. Now, this is something that absolutely has worked in every previous edition of Warhammer 40k and is still almost certainly going to be a thing in 10th edition 40k. And it's a skill that you can work on developing now that will put you in a really good position when 10th edition comes. I gave a sort of brief summary of it in the uh, video where I was talking about various skills you can work on, and I want to do a bit more of a deep dive here and give you some practical examples of what I mean when I talk about identifying a win condition. Now, obviously when you're playing competitive Warhammer 40k, there is a mission score, and uh, essentially everything that you do during the game needs to be in the service of that score. So there's not much point killing enemy units if that's not going to contribute to results on the scoreboard. So identifying the various ways that you can achieve those victory points is key to winning games. It's also worth noting that monitoring how your opponent is able to score victory points and actively trying to interrupt their victory points and their win conditions whilst securing your own is key to winning games. So I'm going to give a few examples here. One of them is uh, we're obviously heading into a new edition that's going to have primary and secondary objectives. And this is something that every army is going to play into and certain armies are going to have strengths and weaknesses in various areas. I can only really comment on the 9th edition mission pack here. However, it's looking like it's going to have similar principles in play in 10th edition. So understanding how it works in 9th will give you an advantage going into 10th. And it's also just a general skill that you can work on that you can bring with you. So in 9th edition, you've got your primary objectives. Both of these are capped at 45 victory points. And your secondaries are both capped at 45, giving you a total potential score of 90 victory points. And then, of course, you get your 10 points for battle ready, which we're not sure if that's going to carry over into the new edition or not. But either way, that was in a, sort of an irrelevant part of the equation anyway. So what you need to be able to do, and this is something you can work on doing now, is projecting what you think your score is going to be and projecting what you think your opponent's score is going to be based on the movements in the game. So looking at the table, looking at the mission, looking at the if there's a sub-primary or a tertiary objective, what is the primary objective, all of these sorts of things, looking at what you think your realistic primary score is going to be. So you might, and you want to update this frequently. Every single battle round, you need to look at it and go, okay, what's my current score? And what scores am I likely to score for the next couple of turns? And if you can look at that, you can get a realistic understanding of what your primary score is going to be, and it's also going to help focus you on what you need to do in order to secure that primary score. All too often, we run off and we start killing things and we start making these big charges and we start doing all this various activity on the tabletop, and a lot of it is actually completely unnecessary and doesn't serve the purpose of securing those primary victory points. So that's one thing that you can work on. Then the next thing you want to do is every single battle round, you want to look at your secondary objectives and get an understanding of what your projected score is going to be. 
So looking at the prob- probabilities and looking at how you, you know, you're tracking and what your secondary selections are and just think to yourself, what am I going to score? Am I going to score 15 off of this one or is my opponent likely to reduce me to the capacity of only scoring, say, 12? Look at all of those and come up with what you think is a realistic score that you are likely to get. Now, when I say realistic, I mean not an optimistic one, but also not a pessimistic one. One where you're looking at the table state and you're like, okay, well, there's not much he can do. Say you're versing a knight army. You know you're very likely to get 15 for bring it down because all you have to do is kill like three or four knights, which you're going to do, and as a result, you're going to get that 15. Or maybe you look at it and you're like, well, actually, realistically, he's playing a really cagey game and you know I'm updating my scores round three and it's looking like I'm probably not going to kill that fourth knight, so I'm probably only going to get a 12 or something like that. That's what I mean by looking at a realistic score projection. And then what you do is you go, cool, I've got my score projection. This is what I think I'm likely to achieve, right? This is my victory points. Then you do the same for your opponent. You look at their score, you look at their, and you update this every battle round in your mind. You go, cool, based on this, they're going to achieve X, Y, Z. And then you need to look at what that means. So if you're looking at their projected score and your projected score, and you realize that they're ahead, or they're going to be ahead, That's when you need to identify what your win condition is. So your win condition might be stop your opponent from scoring one turn of primary. You might realize if I can, instead of them getting a 12 on that turn, if I can push hard and get them down to a 4 instead, like maybe push them off a couple of objectives and that will flip that turn, and as a result they won't get their 45 points worth of primary at the end of the game because I've stopped them from scoring big on that one particular turn, If you identify that that action would result in flipping the game, well, then that's an action that you can then go all in on. And you might have to sacrifice several units to do it. You might have to sacrifice some other victory points in order to achieve it. Like it might be one of those situations where you go, I am likely to max my primary by the end of the game anyway. Maybe you got second turn, so you get the bottom of the turn, so it's easier for you to score late game primary. Or maybe your opponent hasn't committed into your objective secured units the way you initially expected them to. So you're looking at it, you're like, I'm actually in a pretty strong position. I think I'm going to max primary even if I sacrifice some this turn. So you might go, cool, I'm going to jump off of these objectives in order to prevent you from getting yours. So this turn, neither of us get any primary, but that's okay because I'm going to max my primary anyway, and you're not. So that's one example. Another example could be identifying which of their secondaries that they have selected, you can limit them in their scores. So an example for this might be if you're versing somebody who took Bring It Down. And this is something that happened to me on the recent weekend when I went to the ANZ TC, where one of my opponents took uh, Bring It Down. And looking at the scores, I was like, he's actually beating me on primary and there's not much I can do to swing this back. And we're pretty close for secondaries. So it was looking like I'm going to go down and I'm going to lose this round. So I looked at it and I was like, okay, well, what what have I still got? What agency do I have? And is there any way that I can impact his or my score? And I identified that he had taken bring it down and I had vehicles that were in strat reserves. So instead of bringing them on turn two, which was, was my original intent, I held them back until turn three. And then when I did bring them on, I brought them on in a very cagey, position where they were relatively safe from his anti-tank weaponry and the idea here was I was going to get less utility out of these pieces than I otherwise would have but in return I was going to prevent him from killing them which meant he was going to score very low on his bring it down secondary and as a result the game was much much closer than it otherwise would have been because I was able to actively interact with his secondary objectives So that's an example of identifying a win condition. His win condition was killing all of my vehicles. So my win condition then becomes doing whatever it takes to make sure that he doesn't kill all my vehicles. And this was particularly uh, achievable because my vehicles weren't necessarily tethered to my victory points. My vehicles were in the list primarily to do damage to him and therefore prevent his ability to score primary objectives, etc. But... At this stage in the game, it was a foregone conclusion. I was playing against Gene Steeler Cult, and he had models all over the table, so I was like, he's going to get a maximum primary regardless. 
So I actually don't need my vehicles to clear out his troops because he's going to get that score whether I do or not. So there's no point sacrificing vehicles to him in the service of trying to reduce his score because he's going to achieve it anyway. So that's when I made the executive decision to pull those vehicles back, not use them in the way I'd originally intended, not use them aggressively, and just bring them in somewhere safe where he's not going to score victory points off of them. So that's the sort of thing that you can work on now. And then those skills will absolutely translate over into 10th edition when we start playing around with, you know, those those big scores and the big new mission packs and all this new stuff. You're going to be learning all new combos. You're going to be learning all new strategies. But this is one sort of fundamental player skill, identifying those win conditions that you can absolutely carry over. Uh, if you'd like more information on this, I will be doing some Patreon exclusive stuff coming up. So feel free to jump over there and check that out. Uh, we've also got a Discord community over there where we do a lot of conversations on the very, this very topic. So, uh, yeah, check that out. And uh, as always, thanks for tuning in, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Alrighty, guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you did, make sure to like, subscribe, all that good shit. Leave a comment. Join the Discord. Join the Patreon. Pick up some merchandise. Head over to blogforthebloodgod.com if you want more information, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. The Warhammer community suffers from some of the most prohibitively expensive essentials in the world, especially Australian content creators. Every single day, Dean wants to create content, but he can't. Suffering from old, worn-out brushes, expensive model kits, and costly software and equipment, he can't endure much longer. Just look at this dirty paint water. Would you drink this? Would you let your child? Even a small monthly donation can help provide Dean with clean paint water, basic tools for survival, and access to life-saving information and education. So please, follow the links in the description below and find out how you can sponsor a mad cunt like Dean today and end the suffering. Suffering that is cruel, unsustainable,